term teacher, when you think about this term, suddenly this term only brings to the mind somebody who is very wise, who has got a lot of knowledge. And that's somewhere teachers are also at the back of the mind conditioned to that we are transactors of knowledge, right? However, in subconsciously, the relationship between a teacher and a student ever since has had a special, uh, you know, a special flavor to it. All this deliberation that we are talking and doing today, at the hem lies the student-teacher relationship. Now, uh, when we talk about uh, a teacher, we understand that teacher is not just uh, imparting knowledge. Somewhere, she is playing a very, very critical role in the emotional and social development of the child. So things like mutual respect, things like compassion, things like am I making learning the way my student is uh, wanting to learn? Or uh, maybe am I encouraging my students to explore their passion? Is my uh, or am I uh, is my learn classrooms empowering the student and letting them face the challenge of failure or try again? Uh, or am I teaching them resilience? So that somewhere the teachers started not all of course, but by and large the role became I come to the class, I impart knowledge. I have to do certain pro the, uh, projects as and when the changes in the curriculum keep happening, I need to invite that. So teachers, secondly, the teachers are under a lot of pressure. Now, all this can happen when they are liberated from the pressure of result, from the pressure of marks, because there's somebody sitting at the top of the hierarchy which is actually sitting there and how many 50s, how many 60 percenters, why not 90 plus? Till the time this, and that has an effect on the teacher-student relationship. So there, that is very important to understand that the student-teacher relationship, which for years, for, gen, for times and memorials has been uh, the most closest bond between and a very unconditional bond. But now, two things are the biggest challenges in, uh, which come in between the student teacher relations or changing uh, student teacher. One is the pressure of marks, which the teacher already has from the hierarchs, which she passes that pressure to the, uh, the idea of. Uh, finishing the curriculum, finishing the syllabus at that point of time. So somewhere the relationship gets diluted. Now, uh, again, my question is, we need to ask, uh, is the teacher letting the student explore the wrong answers and the right answers? Take that kind of an understanding or is the classroom environment devoid of intimidation, emotional frustration, because the child is probably, and comparison. All these things now, thirdly, with the press of the button, the knowledge is there in front, the information is there in front of the uh, student. So then what is the role of the 21st century educator or the, what is the role? So the role is not just uh, a primary dispenser of knowledge, but you know, helping orchestrating uh, learning and converting information into knowledge, knowledge into wisdom, that is creating students lifelong learners. That will only happen when they both are in a space which is devoid of any kind of pressures. Of course, the structure, let the structure be there. Now with pandemic situation coming in, as it is, the relationship somewhere got an interface of a screen. So the bond of respect and the, the personal touch 
was somewhere diluted now coming back when we come back to the of uh, the new normal come back to our classroom situation the educator with the 21st century educators will have to get conditioned to that education is not about the right and the wrong answer it's actually about building a perspective it's also about letting the student enjoy the process of learning and not just be too focused about the product that is the result let the student fail let the student understand what failure is let them teach them the lessons of resilience these are this is going to be the new bond that the educator would be able to create with the student i think uh, we all need to uh, the technology that we have is going to assist or collect us collect the data but then it is for us to decide what to do with that data now if the data reveals that a particular child is pegged at a certain level and another at another level we cannot have the same assessment for both the children it is okay it is not a race to be run and in every subject uh, the child may not be pegged at the same level that is very important b i feel any data will go awry if uh, you know the language of assessment and of transaction is not very clear and here i feel language of uh, the, the communication is very very important a little while ago we were talking in terms of uh, man was talking about you know using these apps and creating the interest in the subject uh, and i myself used that example of uh, that mathematics uh, class uh, now if i were to put the same thing in a different language which is uh, child centric if i might say or child friendly if i were to put the same problem as in uh, you know if suppose you have eight sweets in your bag and your mother puts three more sweets into your bag how many will you have now that is experiential the child can identify with that and so the child knows the concept the child does not know the jargon and very often the problem with our assessments is use of jargon and when i mark a question uh, an answer incorrect is because it is not adhering as uh, divyani also said then the social science paper right so the teacher marks from here to here this is the answer and no other my way or the highway kind of thing so it doesn't work like that has the child understood that concept now that that language is very very dense for the child maybe for another child it is not so dense so we have to be very very careful about the language we use i know teachers use elucidate elaborate explain all as synonyms they are not so first the teacher has to understand what is the difference among these terms and only then the child can be expected to uh, respond a child might be able to explain it the concept but the child may not be able to elucidate on the concept it is quite possible and lose out on those marks the second uh, the third advice that i would like to give is Uh, the whole concept of zero i feel no child should be given a zero because the child has got up come to school brought his bag bought the uh, tools for attempting the exam probably lost last two nights sleep over that so there is some human element to that so when i put zero that means i am negating the entire human effort so it cannot be zero and that is very very detrimental to a child's image instead of writing a zero yes my system doesn't allow me to do anything at least write instead of writing zero on the paper i can write a note instead you know i know you have tried i know you could not recall but i appreciate the effort that you made but maybe we can meet and discuss this further i mean it is just that and i'm sure that is going to be a game changer for that child the child has heard enough from his parents from his relatives uh, from the peers maybe from other teachers so that is what is required i feel these apparently seem very small things but these small things are what 
make the entire picture uh, for the child. I mean, from this end of the screen, I am looking at 40 children, but I am negating the individuality of that person. Here we talk about experiential learning and we talk about, you know, uh, personalized learning, individualized learning. But if I'm still following this practice, it's in complete contradiction to this individualized and experiential and personalized learning. So how is it customized then? And the other thing that I would like to say finally about, uh, you know, when we are recruiting teachers or even uh, when we are taking students to become teachers for B.Ed. or uh, nursery training, whatever it might be. I think one very important component has to be the psycho-emotional component. Am I, do I have, it is just not marks. Do I have the mindset to be a teacher? Why do we never test that? Not everybody can become that. I have to first have the mindset for that. And uh, that is where we are failing ourselves. We are failing uh, our children and we are failing the nation and the world.